crazy. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go. Let's go insane. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, we are going to craft a phenomenal Revenger build using the Relentless Falks, an outstanding unique weapon capable to destroy all your targets at an insanely fast speed. The Falks is one of the most overpowered and fun weapons you can find in Shadow of the Earth Tree, and it is quite easy to obtain as well. I highlight the impressive anime style of this weapon, it reminds me a lot of this scene. This curved sword is a remarkable option if you are looking for a broken yet stylish build. Under the right setup, the Falks can become one of the best weapons of the entire game. First of all, I'm going to talk about the main features of the weapon, I will explain the details of the build, then I'm going to test it against the strongest bosses of the DLC and the base game, and I will show you how you can obtain this weapon quickly. So without anything further to say, let's sharp these blades a little bit. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Ok guys, what we have here today is a unique cursor with a very decent range and a great design. In the same way that many other weapons of the DLC, if we two handed, we will obtain another one unlocking an R1 power stance moveset. In this particular case I can't complain as the power stance moveset of this weapon class is incredibly good to deal a lot of damage. The reason it is so broken is that the amount of hits we can deal in a pretty swift time window is totally crazy, allowing this weapon category to make fully use of the successive attacks buffs to build an absurdly high damage and completely obliterate our targets. The Falx deals only physical damage damage and scales big with dexterity and deep with strength. Although it might look as an otherly dexterity based weapon, it does get a significant damage boost when leveling up strength, so I will say this is mostly a quality weapon. This curved sword has a passive bleed build up, but it can be infused with Ashes of War, so unfortunately we can boost this effect by increasing the arcane stat. However, because of the nature of the Falks, this is not a problem, cause we are going to be dealing a lot of hits building up bleed extremely fast. The best and most important part of this weapon is its unique skill, Revenger's Blade. A spectacular yet ferocious dash attack that cuts the enemy in half to then shred it to pieces at the speed of light. This skill can be charged to increase the effective range of the first input, but the follow-up will be the same regardless of how we press the button. To be able to use the skill completely, you might need an advanced knowledge about your target's moveset, otherwise you will get hardly punished by any boss when trying to perform the follow-up. The only thing I don't like about this weapon is that just as any other curved sword, it doesn't deal a lot of stance damage, which makes the skill even harder to use. Nevertheless, with a little bit of practice, we can set these blades on fire easily. Easily. As a side note, if you want to increase the bleed build up when using this weapon, you can look for any other curved sword with better bleed values, and you can use it in your offhand paired with the Falks as a traditional curved sword build. The cool part is that you will keep the Revenger's Blade skill to use it as much as you wish, however you will still have the second Falks shielded on your hip which might not look that great, but it is a smart way to increase the performance of this build. Those are the main features of this weapon, now let's jump straight into the equipment and the stats. We are going to be using the Falks on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main boss. I strongly recommend you to use a heavier and better armor for this build, cause that way you will not get interrupted while using the skill. Anyways, if you are interested on my grip, I am using the Ansbach attire with the High Priest Globes, the Shadow Militia Man Griffs, and the Prophet Blindfold. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. If you are missing one of these talismans, the Ritual Sword Talisman is a great alternative, but you have to keep your HP bar full. It is important to mention that as the first part of the skill is chargeable, you can boost it with the God 3 icon. But the follow-up will not get any benefit from this talisman, it's only the first part, and a defensive talisman such as the Dragon Crest Great Shield is never a bad option. In our flask of Wondrous Physique, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. Anyways, if you don't like the fact that the Blood Sucking Crack Tear is going to drain HP slowly, which I don't think it is a problem because it drains it very very slowly, but in case you don't want to use it, you can use the Stone Barb Crack Tear, the Strength Not Crystal Tear, or any other tier you find useful. And this build consumes a decent amount of stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. With this build we are going to be dealing only physical damage, so the best body buff is Blood Boy Aromatic, but if you don't like crafting, you can use Flame Grand Mist Strength perfectly fine. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we need 50 on Vigor, 25 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 42 on Strength, 85 on Dexterity and 25 on Fate. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Mist Strength are going to be our main buffs. And I have my Scattery Blessing on the level 20, this is the best you can do if you want to take your build to the latest part of the DLC. Now that we have completed and optimize or build, what do you say if we begin with the boss fights? Ok guys, to buff your character with this build you have to use Golden Bow first, then a Pickle Turtle Neck if you want, it's completely optional but it's very useful as well, then use your body buff, in this case I will use Blue Boy Aromatic but you can use Flame Grand Me Strength perfectly fine. 
to hand your weapon, refill your FP, and use your Flask of Wondrous Physic, and you're ready to go. Let's go crazy, guys. Let's go wild with this weapon. Boom. Unstoppable. Let's get a little bit crazy. Nice. Amazing. Let's go crazy, baby. Crazy. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> Let's get her, boys. Amazing, baby. Destroyed completely. Nice. Wild. Amazing. Let's go. No way he's fighting. Amazing, bro. Amazing. Let's go. Nice. Okay. Amazing. Wow, well, I took the hit, but I'm okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go insane. 